Hi, this is Robert from the Open Eye in Clovis, California. And as most of you know, or at least most of the locals know, I teach a lot of tarot classes here in the beginning to intermediate range. And I have my number one tip for learning how to read a tarot. And that tip is stop reading tarot for your friends. I'm sure your friends are nice people and because they're nice people, they are going to say nice things about your tarot readings. They're going to tell you, oh, when you said this, it was so right on and they're going to ignore everything that you missed. Or if your friends are a little bit more forthright, they might say, oh, you got this right, but I'm not really sure what you're talking about over here. The other thing that can happen is that you can really nail one. You think you nailed it. Your friend thinks you nailed it. Your friend gives you all kinds of compliments, but then you have to ask yourself one question. Well, how do they know? Human beings lie to themselves all the time. All you may have accomplished is confirming their confirmation bias. You've done nothing with the tarot. In fact, you've probably set them back because now they think all the lies they tell to themselves are true because you read the tarot and spotted those things and gave them some sort of confirmation that didn't set them off or didn't make them think that they were lying to themselves. Okay. You're not doing anybody any favors by reading to your friends and you're not doing yourself a favor by reading for your friends. So what do you do? You read tarot for yourself. And when the cards tell you that in a given situation you're being stubborn, own it. When the cards tell you that you've been lazy at work, own it. When the cards tell you that you are mistreating somebody, own it. When the cards tell you that you are being a great friend and a good neighbor and a good child to your parents or whatever the case may be, own that too. We have a tendency to own the negative stuff well, we have a tendency to think natively about ourselves and then poo-poo anything that's positive. We don't want to do either of those things. We want to own the negative and we want to own the positive. And the way you do that is when those cards tell you that your boss is mad at you because you are being lazy at work and you think about that and you realize you were pretty lazy when dealing with the Jones contract. Write it down. Write down your question. Write down what the cards were. Write down the conclusion you drew and why. Then go into your bathroom, look straight into your mirror and say out loud, I was lazy with the Jones account and I didn't do X, Y, and Z. If you have a friend who's non-judgmental, you can also say it to a friend. I don't know why, but it works best if you say it out loud. You can say it in your head somehow and still deny it. But once it's been spoken into the air, it's harder to remain in denial. Once you've spoken it, the next trick is do something about it. The next time you get an assignment at work, remember the things you were too lazy on on the Jones contract and spend extra effort on those things. Fix your problem. If the cards have told you that you were mistreating somebody, stop it. Do something else, make an atonement to that person, or if you have to stop dealing with that person because the only way you can deal with them is to mistreat them. Change your behavior. When you get a tarot reading that really tells you something, that really strikes you hard as this is a truth, then own it and work to fix it. 
because when you work to fix it, you are showing respect for the process. When you see it, know it's true and ignore it, you are disrespecting the tarot, you are disrespecting your intuition, you are disrespecting your inner quest, and you are disrespecting yourself. And eventually what happens is reading tarot gets harder and harder and harder. So the trick again is to own what you see in the cards. Admit what you see in the cards out loud to your own face or to somebody who will not let you deny it in the future and three, act on it. And when you show that level of respect for what you're doing, the cards will respond accordingly and your intuition will respond accordingly and you will become a better tarot reader. Now I wanna caution you that you are not gonna solve every problem you have by reading the tarot. But most people only have two, three, four major problems in their lives. And I'm talking about the things that are part of your own personality that screw up your life. So let's say you have the big number. Let's say you have four major problems and the tarot helps you solve two of them. Life will be so much easier. You will screw things up only half the time and you will have the courage to find another way to deal with the other two problems. Let's say you have 10 minor problems. These are things that other people might not even see, but maybe you're not quite as good with money as you should be. Maybe you do something that negatively impacts your self-esteem. Maybe you can come up with a list of the other eight to fill in the, the two that I just gave you to get to 10. Whatever those things are, if the tarot helps you solve five or six of them, life is going to get much, much easier. You're going to walk around proud of yourself and you are going to continue to use the tarot. And when you use it right, then you can start reading for others and help them tackle the issues in their lives that they need to move on with their journey. This is Robert at The Open Eye. I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you much.